All right, let's go because you know what I came in to do. I don't get paid for overtime. I'm here to fight. Potential and box office potential as well. How difficult was that decision to make? Obviously, you know, nothing simple here. Um, but it seems fairly straightforward. It was and it wasn't. There's few bits that Ben would, wouldn't budge on, but I think we came to an agreement. And like I said, the most important thing to me was people just have access to watching me. Um, I've had some fights. I think even my last fight was Spider. Hard fight, but I asked myself, how many people watched it? And I don't think a lot of people saw it. And for the blood and the sweat that I shared in that fight, it's important to me that people can watch it, that people have access to watch it. Um, like I say, go home, turn on 401 to 7, wh whichever one it is, you know where to find it. So what happened to the matching right? Eddie? I'm guessing Eddie said, no, nah, we're not going to pay you what Ben's paying you. You can go. That's um, the only logical assumption. And I guess, you know, Eddie's um, man management of the situation isn't as effective when he wasn't on the plane so I mean he's probably still in Guadalajara on the plane back to the UK when Joshua was signing to Sky and he's probably just flabbergasted if I can't entice you to fight Dimitri Bivol for the title what can I do with you just go forget the matching rights just go so he's off to Sky they didn't speak of anything about his next fight being a world title fight and we know he turned down the Bivol smoke and we know what Virgil Hunter thought of that he didn't fancy it for him and that's his trainer. I don't think they're going to make the Dan Aziz fight next. So what's he going to be doing, really? Like, he's been inactive since May last year. He had one fight last year. One fight. Two in 2021. One in 2020. And it's not because the fight dates haven't been there at Matrim. Eddie spoke about Boati likes to do things in his own time. He's never in a hurry to fight. This is a personal decision. He hasn't got a championship belt where... He has deadlines and schedules and a lot of paperwork to make title defences or anything like that. We're talking about an Olympian. 30 years of age and he's not ready to fight for world titles yet. That's a problem. You know, he beat Craig Spider Richards last year on Matrim. But Craig, with less experience, had no issue taking on Dimitri Bivol for the world title. And acquitted himself decently. He didn't win. Went the distance. But yet, Boatsy can't fight Bivol for a million pounds. I didn't like, um... Not that I didn't like. Let's um, rephrase that. The rehearsed bit about nobody saw his fight with Craig Richards, which seemed a bit rehearsed to me. It seemed very rehearsed. And I don't know if Ben Shalom or the people up at Sky told him to say that. Yeah, just take a little shot at the zone. He felt nobody saw his fight against Craig Richards. See, I don't know about all that. We saw last year that Katie Taylor and Serrano knocked off Shakur Stevenson, arguably one of the top up-and-coming fighters in America, knocked him off against Oscar Valdez, very popular amongst Mexicans. They knocked them off on the same night, and that's two women. Then you had Canelo doing a million pay-per-views against Golovkin. Is he doing the calculations for this? Isn't he supposed to be training? I mean, lots of people saw his fight against Craig Richards. The zone has how many countries viewing events? Loads, more than any of a platform he can dream of signing to. So I don't know about all that. And it seems like it's getting very personal between Sky and the zone or Boxer versus Matrim. Why don't you talk about the fights that are going to be made? I mean, we're hearing that the Dan Aziz fight could be in the future. Well, what, what's the point, point of that? You're turning down a world title fight and you don't even have a big announcement of a fight. There's a big announcement that you're signing to Sky, but no big announcement of no fight. Where are the big fights? You turn down a world title to tell us you're signing for Sky. And look, I think he said it's just business. Well, it looks like it's just about money. And obviously boxing's about money. But to make that money, not just signing fees, you've got to take on the relevant contenders and champions. You know, he even plugged the channel number of Sky. Yeah, well, instead of all this app stuff, you could just 401 Sky and you're there. Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The whole corporate plug nature of that press conference is lame i don't know what his situation is with 258 aj's um management company and it seems to me that they're all jumping ship since aj's second loss to usec they're all jumping ship and that's understandable because um what prospects would sign with 258 at the moment you know aj 
Tickets are selling slow for the O2. He's struggling with that. He's got to reestablish himself. But Boatsy's gone. I believe the female boxer, she's gone. Akoli, he's left 258. They still have Ben Whittaker and Fraser Clark. But they're both on, on Sky. But they're all on Sky now. It's too fragmented. Maybe AJ should just disband all that 258 shit for now, man. And just focus on your boxing. He's got more than enough on his plate. And worrying about 258 management. Yeah, it was all good a week ago, like Jay-Z said. But but right now, I'm not too sure. If AJ had beat Yusek and his next defense was in Saudi Arabia. And they offered him a slot on the card. And they were going to give him a million to take a tune-up. You wouldn't have been talking about, oh, no one's seen me on the app. But anyway, he fights in Birmingham in May. That would be his, um, not debut, he's already been on Sky. But that's his next fight date with Boxer. As a DAZN subscriber... I wonder what they're going to do, you know, and it, it's um, it's crazy when you think of the events. Like yesterday, you're watching Eddie in Guadalajara with the biggest draw in the sport, promoting a fight between Canelo and John Ryder. And then next day, you know what I mean, like Sky are poaching away his domestic roster. And they have been doing so for the last six or seven months or so. It's crazy. And, you know, people are going to say, our oh, beats is sour that all the fighters are leaving the zone. You can say whatever you like. You think I have to try and hide how I'm feeling about it? No, I'm telling you, I don't like what's going on. So you can say whatever you want. This is my money I'm dealing with right now. You know, last week's card, Callum Smith pulled out. Liam Paro pulled out. And that depleted the card. The next card is a next-gen card. And the domestic cards on the zone are now taking a severe hit. They're being depleted. You know, like... Defection to Sky, that accounts for a lot of the cards being weakened. And then injury, fighters pulling out, Callum Smith and Paro pull out. And that accounts for more fighters missing in action. Cards keep getting depleted and more and more depleted. And they got to do something about this. I mean, Sky are just targeting all of Macron's fighters. They're not even going anywhere else with fighters right now. I don't know what they're going to do, but <laughs> you would hope something is going to be done to try and stop it. You know, and like, to all the people saying Beats is bitter, Beats is bitter. Hold on. Didn't you hear me a few episodes back before he signed anywhere saying you've turned down a million pounds to fight Bivol for the world title and the receipt for the duck is right there where Virgil Hunter told us that he needs a few more fights before he fights a Bivol or a Baturbiev. That's a swerve. You know, Benjamin's coming out today saying... Oh, Bawatsi wouldn't swerve the Bivol fight. But we've got the receipt of Virgil Hunter saying he's not ready. Bawatsi seems pretty animated. And it didn't seem all aimed at Eddie Hearn. He was taking shots at the zone. Is it just Eddie he's mad at? I don't know. How come fighting on the app is no issue for Canelo and Joshua? But it's no hassle for them to fight on the app. The likes of Golovkin, one of the most popular fighters in the sport... Katie Taylor, the biggest draw in women's boxing. Or Dimitri Bivol, one of the pound-for-pound pound best fighters. But it's too small a platform for Joshua Boatze. Now, you're turning down fights with Bivol. And there was a potential fight with Callum Smith at Matra. Who have they got? They haven't got no light heavies over there as good as Bivol and Callum Smith. They've got Dan Aziz, and I like Dan Aziz. I'm a fan. But he's not as good as Ka- I don't think he's good as Callum. And he definitely ain't as good as Bivol. You know, Joshua Boatze is talking about... All you got to do is go to 401 on Sky and it's all there. You don't have to go through all the process of getting the app. A lot more people are viewing their content online through apps than ever. A lot more people. And these are people who weren't initially tech savvy. Let's start there. And if you're talking about numbers watching your fight, how much people are going to see him fight Dan Aziz for the European title compared to fighting Bivol for the WBA title? Oh, f- what platform it's on. You know, the Callum Smith fight was massive. Was massive on the DAZN app. But we're not going to get that now. And trust me, I'm going to be looking at the viewing figures when he fights the tune-up in Birmingham in May to see how much people tune in. Is he going to be headlining? I don't even know if he's a headliner. You know, people are going to talk shit. But no one has heard me throw bass at Lawrence Acoli. He's left Matram to go sky because Lawrence isn't ducking no smoke. Lawrence ain't duck no smoke. You know, in fact, it was Bradis who ducked him. He ain't ducking no smoke. He's looking to unify the straps. And he's made the best um, business decision he thought he could make 
at Boxer. And in all truth, the likes of Billiam Smith has fallen him over there and React Poor has fallen him over there. There's not really much Eddie has on a domestic level for a Coley. And he got a nice signing fee. I've got no issue with a Coley. But Boatsy, a Coley didn't say he was leaving because nobody was seeing his fights. He didn't say that. If Eddie said that, yeah, I've got Meris Brady's lined up to fight a Coley, but he doesn't want to take the fight and we're offering him two million for the defense or whatever. And then he leaves to go sky and doesn't announce a fight of any significance. Yeah, you're damn right. I'd be saying some shit about Lawrence. You're damn right. It's not like Boatsy is leaving Matram because he can't get fights. That's not the reason. That's not the reason. And people accept, okay, leave. You're not getting no fights. You're inactive. Yeah, leave. That makes sense. But what he's saying here, Joshua Boatsy on Eddie Hearn saying he rejected one million pounds to fight Dimitri Bibble for the WBA title. Joshua's saying, what were the caveats? You end up signing an extension of two or three years at a channel you don't want to be on. This guy will say anything he wants to say. I couldn't care less. So basically, he got your world title shot and your gripe is that you might have to sign an extension well, what promoter is going to get you a title shot and not have an expectation to retain your services for your next few fights? Hopefully, title defences. He's gambling as well. If you lose, he's got to pay you for that extension. You've got to be compensated. And you're not the same value that you would have been if you won. If he was trying to get an extension from Boatsy and wasn't delivering him fights, yes, I'd understand what you're saying. That would make sense. But he's delivering the world title fight to Boatsy and Boatsy's rejected it. That's the bottom line, is you've rejected the fight. A two-year extension is nothing for a world title opportunity in modern day boxing, it just isn't. Like, more than likely, Bivol might want a rematch clause in there, which is gonna keep you at Macrum for the next six months or year or so, if you win. Joshua Boatsy is signed with Boxer. Good move for him, do you feel, Sam? I think it's just a weird one. I know, like... <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I just find it strange. I think it's a great move for boxer. I think it's a great signing from boxer because Boatsy's um, top tier talent, really, really good talent. I just think it's, I just think it's weird. It's a weird move, in my opinion, for Boatsy. He's turned down world title fights a couple of times now. Uh, apparently, he's turned down to fight Anthony Yard on BT Sport. He's leaving a stable that has Canelo, Belanga, Callum Smith. It, it, uh, right, John Ryder, just like that, like all, all in and around his weight, and he and he's and he's left. I, I just find it bizarre. It's a bizarre move for me, like um, from his from his point his point of view. But yeah, listen, well done to uh, Boxer because it's a great it's a great signing. But to leave all of that and then go and fight Dan Aziz, who I'm not playing down Dan Aziz is probably, as, like, I've, I've literally just tweeted. He's one of my favourite fighters, Dan Aziz. Um, so I'm glad he's getting. The recognition is it's just a weird movement. It's a real, real. I just think it's a bit of a cop out from from Boatsy, if I'm perfectly honest. But hey, I like Joshua Boatsy. It might not sound it. I'm disappointed. I wanted to see him fight for the title on his own and go on to do big things. I don't like that he swerved the fight and then tried to throw it on Eddie while he swerved the fight with Bivol. And I'm not just saying that with the knowledge that he's signing with Boxer today. I've been saying it just a few days ago. I've been saying this. But all the best. Get your paper. And get them legacy defining fights. And I'll leave it there. Anyway, let's get on to John Ryder, who doesn't duck smoke, yeah? And it's weird, you know, like, I believe he's Eddie's longest serving fighter he has on the books, John Ryder. I believe he is. And he's got his reward. He's got his reward. I think Eddie went out for John Ryder because of that. Look how long I've had him here. And John is one of the most improved fighters in world boxing right now. There's no doubt, in my mind anyway. So he's won an interim WBA belt. And he's won the interim WBO belt. And now he's going to fight for the full strap against the real deal, Canelo. Press conferences in Guadalajara yesterday. People are saying the likes of Charlo and Demetrius Andrade should get the fight before John Ryder. But hold on. Didn't Charlo duck or swerve Danny Jacob? A fight that John Ryder took and won, albeit controversially, but he does have the W on his record. I thought Danny won, but that's irrelevant. It was a close fight. John Ryder stepped up and he got the W. On the strength of that, he got the shot against Zach Parker. So, hold on. Didn't Demetrius Andrade avoid that fight, which is essentially an eliminator to fight Canelo? He avoided that fight. Ryder stepped up 
And a lot of people thought Zach Parker was going to win. I picked John Ryder. Ryder took him out. Demetrius missed his opportunity. He's got hold of two belts at two weights and surrendered both of them without losing them in the ring when he could have done something about it at 154 and 160. And then threw away his opportunity at 168 to get a shot at Canelo. But this is the guy you're pitching up to fight Canelo. Someone who can't even defend his belts. Come on now. John Ryder deserves his shot. That's what you get when you don't duck smoke. Opportunities open up for you. But you've got to be consistent. He deserves his shot. Big up John. May the 6th, Guadalajara. I, I hope he doesn't fall apart on the night and he puts up a good account like I'm banking on. He will. Because then, you know, they're going to say, ah, oh, Euro bum, should have never got a shot. Should have let Andrade, who hasn't done nothing in years, or Charlo, who hasn't done nothing in years. And Benavides, what's he really done? It's all about earning your opportunity. And the guys you're saying are ahead of John. They haven't really did this shit.